For many people, waste is a black box. So you have your garbage can, you go out in the morning, you throw something out there, you don't really know what's happening. There comes a garbage truck, something, you know, it goes away and, and, what, and what else, right? I think today in, in modern society, we're not so good at looking at trash as, as a valuable resource. It's always been a resource, actually. So what do you do with that? Let's face it, we have a trash problem. Humans throw away 3.5 million tons of waste every single day. By the end of the century, that number will triple. And making matters worse, countries like China have stopped collecting the world's trash. So what now? Well, imagine a city where there's no waste problem. There's virtually no landfill, no dump, no overflowing trash cans. It's a reality for one city in Denmark. Here in Copenhagen, they've figured out an innovative solution to waste management. They're turning piles of trash into this ski slope. And to get it there, they're using this sensor. <laughs> All right, here's the trash dog. Go. It's pretty funny. Do you guys have a sensor? Yeah. You can, you can just show us yeah, way. absolutely. Come with me. This is basically what it looks like. To solve the trash problem, it first has to be collected. For cities all over the world, sites like these are not uncommon. Trash just literally piling up on the street. But in Copenhagen, it's more like this. And that's thanks to these guys. This is the North Sand sensor. It's basically the same size of Pegasus figure. It's installed typically in the lid of a bin, and it measures the distance to the contact, and not only the distance, but also the volume, so we have a sort of a, a depth map of what the, the content looks like. They use that 3D image to determine how full each trash can is around the city. From there, they use a data platform to optimize collection routes to only pick up bins that are full. So the, the answer is no more bins. The, the answer is better placed bins, better sized bins, and then, you know, going only targeted towards the ones that need to be. It's a simple solution that started here in Copenhagen, but it's catching on in the rest of the world, like other parts of Europe, Israel, and San Francisco. NordSense has helped cities cut their waste management budget in half. And not only that, sidewalks stay clean, and there are less trucks on the road. But the challenge doesn't end there. The garbage still needs to go somewhere. Copenhagen has actually found a way to turn every piece of trash into something to help the city. So what we do here in Denmark is to use the residual waste as fuel on par with coal or oil or whatever you otherwise would burn. So we'll take the waste that is not recycled from the city and we burn it. So we get electricity and we get central heating. So this is where Copenhagen's trash goes. 300 truckloads of waste arrive here every day to this plant just 10 minutes from downtown. They burn that trash to create high pressure steam, which drives the turbines to create heat and electricity. The plant is so successful, they even import trash from other countries to keep up with energy production. In fact, they burn 400,000 tons of garbage per year. And while that has a carbon footprint, instead of sending trash to landfills, it's transformed into electricity for 60,000 homes and heat for 100,000 more. The Copenhagen power plant is, is kind of special. It's the, one of the world's most cleanest and eco-friendly waste incineration plants. Now, normally this kind of plant will be far away from the city right, center. Right. I've never and, been to a power plant. No, so. and, and, and you're not welcome because it is uh, pressure and heat and so on. So we had to make sure that this is the safest waste to energy plant in the whole world. And, and it is by far because we have had, we've made some modifications uh, to the plant. We, we've broken new ground, made new standards uh, to make it possible that the waste to energy plant can be in the, in the center of a capital city. It's so safe, they've turned the roof of this power plant into a massive public space. It is extremely difficult, I can tell, to, to create artificial ski slope and a, a green roof park on, on a slope like this. This is now Copenhagen's only ski slope, and it can be used year-round, no matter the weather. There's also a rooftop cafe, a climbing wall, and hiking trails. So this climbing wall will be the world's tallest climbing wall. It's so tall you can do multi-pitch climbing for the first time in Denmark, which is pretty freaking cool. And interest has been so massive. Uh, we have people running over the fence every night trying to get up on the band. We have, we have media from all over the world and, and like the whole skiing community are just sort of waiting uh, eagerly to, to come out here. Here you get the a fantastic opportunity to learn about what is going on on the other side of your garbage can, right? And at the same time, hopefully, you will have a fantastic experience on this marvelous roof park. Oh, 
obviously we, we need to we need to find ways of living and working that does not destroy the planet we have. I mean, it's, it's very nice to hear people wanted to colonize Mars and build space stations on the moon, but I think we should start with taking care of what we have here. I think, you know, sustainability is the, the, the key to everything. Uh, I have uh, children, maybe you do too. I want to, to give them the chance uh, of uh, enjoying uh, living in a, in, a, in a clean world uh, with prospects for the future. I see that as, uh, as a part of my job and what I really want to do. And I think, you know, it, it starts with us. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video about the future of cities, don't forget to subscribe to Freethink and like this video for more great videos every week.